Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear students, welcome back to our lecture series on introduction to science fiction studies. We have already discussed about a lot of authors by now. Now it is time to discuss the Indian scenario. Where does science fiction stand in India? Before that, let us take a small recap of the previous authors. We have discussed the ABC of science fiction that is Asimov, Bradbury and Clark. We have discussed the big three where Asimov and Clark are common and along with them Robert Heinlein. These people we have already discussed. Apart from them, we have also discussed authors like Jules Verne. We have discussed R. L. Stevenson. We have discussed Aldous Huxley and then we also have H. G. Wells. So all these people, it, they create a kind of panorama, right? You have a very big kind of view of what the science fiction world looks like. What are the themes which are the common ideas, common tropes, common backgrounds? What are the backgrounds that we have had so far? We have had time travel. We have had space travel. We have had alien encounters. Then travel within the earth. That is journey to the center of the earth, then 20,000 leagues under the sea. Everywhere there are ideas which contradict to the common uh, acceptability that yes, uh, this idea is very feasible for human beings. But no, these novelists, these particular authors, they have pushed the boundaries of acceptability. For them, sky is the limit. My um, you know, train ticket is not the limit. My bus ticket is not the limit. The sky is the limit. I wish to travel and so shall I. So that kind of attitude. So all of these authors mostly based in USA or UK. Invariably they have been in either of these two countries. Either the America or the uh, British, you know, subjects of the British Empire. Because English, because of this language, English. English is the language of the colonizer. Wherever English went, people started reading this language, learning this language because English was the language of the colonizer, was the language of the trade and finally the language of money. But later on it also became the language of power. So English spread like that throughout the world, throughout the colonies which British had already established right so us was once a british colony india was once a british colony and all those countries who were once a british colony and had to gain fight for their independence they are a part of the common wealth we can say that this is a commonwealth uh, nation um, kind of experience but science fiction is not real, you know any way um, a subjugate aspect. It is not a, a subject of the commonwealth uh, kind of idea. It is always questioning that idea. Science fiction at multiple stages, later on we will be discussing it, that science fiction has a tendency of acting like a metaphor. Acting like a metaphor that can contradict, that can challenge the colonizer's rule. The entire concept of colonization has been questioned uh, has been looked at as a dystopia and lots and lots of other uh, things that has been discussed in science fiction. So let us come back to this part. So US and UK, they were the place where science fiction was budding the most at that time. Now we will consider the science fiction that is written in India. And let us remember India was also one of the colonies of the UK at one point of time. So Indian science fiction scenario. What 
do you think make a guess before i start uh, delivering this content to you uh, let just take a make a guess are you familiar with any of the authors of science fiction in india i'll give you let's say 5 seconds can you recall any of the authors i'm i'm sure that um, somewhere sometime you might have heard of anybody no why because most of the time we can recall science fiction movie series we can recall science fiction tv series we can recall the visual media but authors who have actually written books and stories are publishing in newspapers and magazines we cannot recall their contribution mostly due to the overpowering influence of social media and movie see, movie and films and tv right authors are somehow you know they are taking the back stage right now and movie series and television um things and ott uh, especially ott series they are taking the center stage more and more but it is very um required for us as indians to understand the indian science fiction scenario and what was there in the beginning sir jagadish chandra bose i'm sure you have heard of um, sir jagadish chandra bose if you have not heard of him it is uh, you know a prime time to go and look him up in the internet sir jagadish chandra bose uh, was the first one at least to write uh, a paper on the idea of a radio but before he could publish his paper markani had already published his paper on radio therefore the invention of radio goes to markani instead of jagadish chandra bose jagadish chandra bose had also proved that plants do have life that is something of a you know path breaking contribution that uh, sir jagadish chandra bose had towards the realm of science a polymath polymath means he had expertise in many different subjects physics science chemistry biology literature he had uh, a, an idea of moving around in all these domains of knowledge uh, he had that kind of grasp on every subject a polymath with interests in biology physics botany and writing science fiction he also wrote science fiction niruddesher kahini the story of the missing one a short story that was later expanded and added to abhyakta collection in 1921 with the new title polatok tufan runaway cyclone it was one of the first works of bengali science fiction and bengali this particular word is representative of the community if we say bangla it is representative of the language the name of the language is bangla whatever written in bangla is bengali okay then we have kokulanando mahapatra an indian scientist see scientists here also he is a polymath biology physics botany at the earlier stage of indian science fiction the scientists were writing science fiction stories not the literature or the you know hardcore literature writing and studying people no only the scientists they were trying to write scientific fiction an indian scientist and science fiction writer who popularized science in the odia language over 95 science fiction and children science books chandra ra mrityu that means death of the moon nishabd goduli that means silent uh, dusk madam kuri and neela chakra bala shapore founding member of orissa bigyan prachar samhita retake chandra ra mrityu death of the moon nishabd goduli a silent evening madam kuri and nilo chakraro bala sapare founding member of orissa bigyan prachar samhiti with the objective of making science popular in the state of orissa so his idea of writing science fiction was mostly inspired by making science a popular discussion item in the oriya community so his was the project of science communication that is what science communication means when you are trying to promote scientific attitude when you are trying to promote uh, the um, want in the people to get science the scientific knowledge to know about the world 
uh, unless and until you develop that kind of affinity among the youngsters people or the you know the upcoming generation would not take interest in whatever is out there uh, outside the normal domain of knowledge he received orissa sahitya academy award for his book e jugaro shreshto abiskaro that is in oriya uh, the best inventions of this age this is the book he wrote and uh, he got the oriya sahitya academy award Dalit speculative fiction writer and editor Mimi Mondol is the first science fiction writer from India to have been nominated for the prestigious Hugo Awards. There is a special lecture I think it is the 19th or the 18th lecture where we will be discussing the importance of these awards. Well Hugo Hugo award is the uh, highest or the most prestigious award given to the science fiction works. Mimi Mondol is the first person to have been nominated or her book was nominated for the hugo awards um, in this uh, history of science fiction indian science fiction right anil menon anil menon is an indian science fiction writer known for his novel the beast with 9 billion feet and his short stories that explore themes of technology and society arvind mishra i let me tell you i personally am in contact with arvind mishra sir he is one of the members of the indian association for science fiction studies and also one of the members of uh, bharatiya vigyan katha samiti uh, i am a member of both of those association therefore i am in touch with uh, mr arvin mishra sir he is a wonderful human being and a great writer manjula padmanabhan an author and playwright manjula padmanabhan has written science fiction stories that explore dystopian futures and the impact of technology on society now we will go forward with some very popular science fiction writers in india vandana singh a prominent contemporary indian science fiction author vandana singh is known for her thought provoking and imaginative stories her works often blend science fiction with elements of indian culture and mythology slowly as we go down this lecture we have a special slide for vandana singh because of one of the most interesting and humorous science fiction stories that has been ever conceived um, in indian culture we will be discussing that too samit basu an author and filmmaker samit basu is known for his fantasy and science fiction novels his the simokin prophecies is a popular fantasy novel with elements of science fiction amitabh ghosh A renowned novelist Amitabh Ghosh has ventured into science fiction territory with his novel The Calcutta Chromosome which delves into themes of genetics history and technology although Amitabh Ghosh is not directly a science fiction author yet his works uh, especially The Calcutta Chromosome it is a part of the science fiction genre Sugato Bhattacharya a Bengali author known for his science fiction stories often with a blend of speculative and philosophical elements so all of these writers are very popular in today's time before we move on to further discussion of today's science fiction scenario let us first start with the beginning that is one of the best writers of science fiction is satyajit ray undoubtedly born on may 2 1921 in calcutta see 1921 is exactly the year when sir jagadish chandra bose had published his book of vyakta which was later titled as polatak tufan so he was born in that year in calcutta now kolkata india he is an artist cartoonist author dramatist poet and film director i am not sure if satyajit ray had uh, left any of the fields untouched by his intelligence and excellence his grandfather was upendra kishore ray choudhury he was a writer an illustrator and composer so his grandfather was equally um, literate and uh, creatively inclined his father shukumar ray was a renowned writer and poet we literally in the bengali community if you go you will see that they have this book called abol tabol it is somewhat like limerick and uh, nonsense verse it is very famous among the children of bengal that particular book written by sukumar ray satyajit ray is the recipient of 32 national film awards and bharat ratna he has 
received 32 national film awards can you imagine we cannot imagine we don't even know the name of such awards and he was also the recipient of Bharat Ratna because his contribution to development of the Indian film scenario Indian literary scenario was so magnificent and uh, unparalleled unprecedented so these are some of the best award film awards that he has received Moscow Film Festival in 1979 he was awarded for the contribution to cinema Berlin Film Festival he was one of only three to win the silver beer for best director more than once seven golden beer nominations in the uh, Venice uh, Film Festival he won a golden lion for Aparajito this is a film awarded the Golden Lion Honorary Award in 1982. In 1992, he was posthumously awarded the Akira Kurosawa Award for Lifetime Achievement in Directing at the San Francisco International Film Festival. He was not given the Oscar because Oscar is not given to a person who is dead because his name came up for the Oscar also. Well known for his critically acclaimed movie, Pothir Panchali. So, uh, the most critically acclaimed movie so far from the Indian panorama of movies is uh, still Pothir Panchali. Uh, it is still screened in uh, film festivals throughout the world. Satyajit Ray and science fiction. Satyajit Ray had written a whole lot of science fiction especially through his Professor Shonku series. Professor Shonku is a mathematician physicist. Uh, he is almost like Professor Calculus from Tintin, um, the comic strip Tintin, right? So Professor Shonku, he goes and he is able to explain the phenomena through his scientific knowledge. Satyajit Ray created the character of Professor Shonku, a brilliant and eccentric scientist in a series of science fiction stories. Professor Shonku's adventures take him to various fantastical and otherworldly locations where he encounters aliens, time travel, and encounters with extraordinary creatures. So all the stories under this particular series of Professor Shonku, they explore every realm of science fiction possible. Only because that time alternate realities and multiverse concept was not that popular, those concepts were not taken up. But rest, time, space, travel, time travel, aliens, every common aspect of science fiction has been um, looked at by Satyajit Ray. Kailash Chaudhary Pathor or Kailash Chaudhary's Jewel. This science fiction story revolves around a mysterious and magical stone that grants the ability to travel back in time. The protagonist Kailash Chaudhary embarks on a thrilling journey through different historical periods. Then I have uh, you know, laid out for you the uh, short story Bonku Babu's Friend which in Bangla is called Bonku Babur Bondhu. In this short story, I've selected this short story for a definite purpose. So I've selected this particular short story keeping in mind the Indian culture. What is so different about Indian culture? Is it not like any other culture? Yes, it has many similarities with many world cultures. But one of the uh, most important aspect is our mutual respect, our um, the human relations that we share, the human bonds that we share, the kindness we show, the mercy we show towards other uh, plants, animals and things, everything we have a spiritual connection with. So this Indian mystical element of friendship, of love, of respect, of empathy, of sympathy, everything actually goes on to make the Indian ethos. So in Bonku Bapu's friend, uh, we will find something very similar to that. Let us have a look at it. Bonku Babur Bondhu. In this tale, a patient and dedicated teacher is bullied by his students and ridiculed by his colleagues. Perchance, he meets an alien who mistakenly had landed on Earth instead of Pluto. Through their friendship, Ang, Ang is the name of the alien, exposes Bonku Babu to new ideas, places and experiences beyond his familiar surroundings. This encounter transforms Bonku Babu, empowering him with newfound confidence and a broader perspective on life. He learns the true meaning of friendship and gains the ability 
to speak up against the ridicule he had endured throughout his life. First of all, we will discuss the story on its brass tacks. An alien from space comes and befriends a human being who is troubled. How is that human being troubled? Because although he is a very patient man, but still his students, they don't listen to him, they bully him, they call him names. His colleagues, they actually, in one of the sentences in the story, one of the colleagues come and tell him that if there are aliens, you are the perfect person they should pick. You are the per perfect person they should kidnap and experiment on. So these kind of derogatory remarks or comments that Bunku Babu's own friends and colleagues make, all of these things weigh on his mind and he is low on confidence. He does not know how to fight back. He does not know how to speak back. He is not an unkind person. But the alien from space, the name of the alien is Ang. He comes from space and he opens a new door in front of Bunku Babu and tells, look at the universe, look how many planets are there, how many species are there, the entire cosmos is there. And you think that if you speak up, then uh, you will be thought of as a bad person. But no, if you speak up, people will start respecting you. So that is one of the most important aspects that somebody from space comes and tells you, um, gives you a better look at the society around you. Because one person who is inside that social reality is not able to improve anything. It is um, boiling water frog syndrome. The frog does not run away from the boiling water thinking that the water is beating, I will just adjust my temperature. But after a certain point of time, he is so um, weak that he cannot jump out of the boiling water and uh, the frog dies in the boiling water. That is how frogs are prepared in foreign countries for eating, let me tell you. Okay, so boiling water uh, frog syndrome is exactly what Bonku Babu was experiencing. Bonku Babu was thinking that, okay, let them harass me. How much will they harass? I will take it all on me. I will not uh, speak up. I will not fight back. I am not a bad person. But this alien who is coming from space explains to Bonku Babu that how you are enabling them. First of all, you are not resisting them. That is a bad thing in itself. But you are also encouraging them to do that same thing onto others. Do you think that is right? So Ang gives, uh, takes him to places, takes him to other universes and lets him have a look outside the boiling water. So once he comes up, that particular uh, you know, pond is small for this frog. Right? So the alien here is actually the knowledge, the um, affiliation to higher domains of knowledge. Once you are there, you will be able to understand that how... Uh, small and flimsy this kind of distraction is. People are bullying you. You stand up. That's it. They will never do that again. But if you start enabling them, they will move on from you to another person, to another person, to another person. So, a beautiful idea of resisting this kind of uh, bullying is presented through the story. So, being kind is a part of Indian culture, but also protecting the weak. That is what the alien does. He protects the weak is also very much Indian in its nature. Right? And moreover, not only protecting the weak, but empowering the weak, right? Giving them the power. Okay. So moving forward, magic realism movies, Kupika and Bhagabain, it follows, it is a science fiction kind of thing, but it is also touches the border of magic realism. It follows the adventures of Gupi and Bagha, two hapless and musically inclined individuals who receive magical powers from the king of ghosts with their newfound abilities to teleport, get dresses and food, wearing magical shoes and by clapping each other's hands, they embark on a journey to bring peace to two warring kingdoms. Hirok Rajar Deshe, satirical approach to address socio-political issues in a fantasy setting, set in the kingdom of Hirok. Hirok means diamond. 
and raja means king and desh means kingdom so in the kingdom of the uh, king of the diamonds or the diamond king kingdom of hirok and centers around the oppressive rule of the king who suppresses free speech and promotes mindless consumerism Gopi and Bagha once again use their magical powers to bring about positive change and empower the people to stand against tyranny, critique of authoritarian regimes, and upholds the values of democracy and freedom. So, in these two particular stories, we find the elements of science fiction in the second one, that is, in the kingdom of uh, the Diamond King. There, there is actually the room is called as Mogur Dholai. So, Mogur, in that Mogur Dholai room or in the whitewashing of minds room, people who do not listen or follow the dictates of the monarch, dictates of the king, they are put inside that chamber and something happens inside the chamber. So, when these people come out of it, their entire mind has been whitewashed. They have been conditioned to think as they are wanted to by the king. So that entire Mogaj Dholai chamber is the uh, science fiction um, contempt of memory manipulation and classical conditioning and all other things. Jayant Vishnu Narlikar. Now we are moving on to a different author. If we start lecturing on Satyajit Ray, it is uh, perhaps th there can be an entire lecture series on Satyajit Ray. Anyway, moving on to Jayant Vishnu Narlikar. These are the fellowships that he has from different science fiction societies around India. Born in 19 July 1938, Chand Vinarlikar is still alive and he attends the uh, annual International Conference on Science Fiction Studies organized by Indian Association for Science Fiction Studies. Every time Chand Vinarlikar is invited and he attends most of the time. He is an Indian astrophysicist, again another scientist. Emeritus Professor at the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, IUC AAA. He is also the propounder of hoyle narlikar theory, non-believer of the Big Bang theory. So what is this hoyle narlikar theory? Alternative cosmological model known as quasi-steady-state cosmology in the 1960. So this particular theory which is given by Narlikar along with his supervisor Fred Hoyle, this theory proposes a, an alternative explanation of the birth of the universe or the nature of the universe apart from Big Bang theory. Earlier the Big Bang theory is, was considered the only theory that is how universe is expanding, that is how um, you know the galaxies are moving away from each other uh, every uh, second. But Hoyle and Narlikar, they came up with a different theory. They said that there is, um, you know, continuous generation, continuous generation of matter. And Big Bang theory is not the explanation of the origin of the universe. The theory challenged the prevailing Big Bang theory and suggested a continuous creation of matter. Narlikar has been actively involved in promoting science fiction education and awareness in India. He has delivered lectures and conducted workshops to inspire younger generation to pursue careers in science. Right? So, science communication is again our term when we are talking about Nalikar. Because being an astrophysicist, it is already a tough job. You know, you are always there involved in studying the entire sky 24 into 7. But Nalikar makes provisions for taking that knowledge from the uh, hallowed domain and bringing it to common people, spreading it among young children so that they might get hold of that interest and go forward to studying um, science and astrophysics in future. The special awards and recognitions that have been received by Jayant V. Narlikar are Number in the first we have 2004 Padma Vibhushan, 1965 Padma Bhushan. This is by the way the highest civilian award given to India. Highest civilian award in India. 1965 Padma Bhushan, 1996. He won the Kalinga Prize. Now uh, I will talk a little about Kalinga Prize. 
an award given by UNESCO for exceptional skill in presenting scientific ideas to lay people. It was created in 1952 following a donation from Biju Patnaik, founder president of the Kalinga Foundation Trust in India. So Biju Patnaik is a very well-known academician from Orissa. He donated a huge sum of money to this particular uh, Kalinga Foundation Trust. Kalinga Foundation Trust uh, went on to UNESCO and they established an award called the Kalinga Prize which is given to individuals around the globe for explaining science in such a way so that even laymen understand them very easily. So Kalinga Prize is one of the rare prize given to individuals. Shanti Swaru Bhatnagar Prize for Science and Technology awarded in India given annually by Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR for notable and outstanding research applied or fundamental in biology, chemistry, environmental science, engineering, mathematics, medicine and physics for his quasi state uh, model which you will get over here again I am forgetting the term because I am not really remembering all of the terms I am sure uh, you as youngsters will be remembering them more efficiently and with much more interest quasi steady state cosmology QSSC so due to uh, his formulation of this theorem he was given the Shanti Swaru Bhatnagar award but uh, you will be very surprised to know that in 2014 he received the Saitya Academy Award also for writing his stories and novels. Uh, Saitya Academy Award is strictly a literary award and it is an award given to a person for contributing to that vernacular language, to the literature of that vernacular language or also to the Indian um, literature all over. So he was writing in uh, Marathi as well, Jandvi Narlikar and in English as well. Moving on to some of the works, very popular works, The Return of Vaman. This science fiction novel is set in the distant future and explores the concept of time travel. It follows the adventures of a young boy named Vaman who accidentally travels through time and witnesses different periods of Indian history. The Adventure in this story, a science fiction which is trying to show the convergence of science, history and philosophy. In reality, the three disciplines, namely science, history and philosophy, have to employ different methodology of inquiry vis-a-vis -vis the subject matter. Actually, what happens is that science, history and philosophy, these three have three separate things that they question, three separate points of inquiry. but in this particular um, uh, story or collection of stories, you will find that science is mixing with history, history is mixing with philosophy, philosophy is again mixing with science. So Jayant Vinalikar has that kind of depth of understanding what science is, what its opportunities are and what are its consequences. Now moving on to another very interesting author in our series today, Vandana Singh. She is currently writing and uh, when we organized the 6th um, International Conference on Science Fiction Studies in July 2022, she was one of the speakers who attended the conference online. One of our stories uh, had you know, made a very loud noise in the Indian science fiction scenario, we will shortly be talking about it. She is an Indian science fiction writer and physicist. So, what does she actually do? She is an associate professor and chair of the Department of Physics and Earth Science, Farmingham State University in Massachusetts. She is an associate professor of physics and still she is writing, she is um, coming up with uh, more and more relevant stories in order to spread some very good points of, uh, let's say, social discussion, um, some political identities. Everything has been represented in a metaphorical or with a metaphorical spin in her works. She is also the member of Advisory Council of METI, Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Now you will be very much uh, you know, interested, oh is there a technique? Yes, there is a separate facility set up in US for only messaging 
for sending signals out in the space and seeing whether any signal would come back. So there is an entire facility set up by the government there. Distances 2008 This novella tells the story of a young woman, Rama, who has the ability to travel through space and time. The novella delves into the consequences of Rama's unique gift and its impact on her life and relationships. Not always time travel is good. Whenever you travel in, through time or you are breaking the natural flow of time, then you will always be creating a separate timeline. You will be making uh, branched timelines. Ambiguity Machines and Other Stories published in 2018. In this collection, Singh presents a series of speculative stories that challenge perceptions of reality and explore the boundaries of human understanding. Next we have, this is uh, the work I was talking about, The Woman Who Thought She Was a Planet. Kamala, uh, let us uh, read a small excerpt. I have taken this excerpt from a research paper by Dr. Kavya P. Kamala was estranged from her husband and being isolated, she confines herself in her own imaginary world. The ex-bureaucrat and moral hypocrite husband, Ramnath Mishra, neglected his wife all through his life and later witnessing his wife's strange behavior makes him angrier rather than being worried. At the end, Kamala frees from her selfish husband by imagining herself as a planet and flies away to the universe. So in this particular story, this uh, woman named Kamala, she starts thinking herself as a planet. You will be also very, you know, a, a little bit surprised to know that she tells her husband that planets don't wear dress so she takes off her dress and she moves around inside the house wearing nothing in uh, you know stark naked what her husband then tells her is that even planets have atmospheres they have you know uh, some kind of uh, air covering them all the time so you must wear something like that cover yourself with a blanket like a planet covers itself like with an atmosphere. So these are some very funny incidents that happen. But behind the story, what is the actual motive? The motive is when uh, the author tries to tell the story of an estranged housewife, an est estranged wife who is not, you know, looked after properly by her husband, who is not properly taken care of by her husband. Her husband does not pay enough attention to her, not in the sense that she is an attention seeker, but she also has her individuality. When she is denied that in her own household, she starts contemplating herself as a planet and she thinks that little aliens live on her, on her body because she is a planet. This kind of estranging herself from the entire reality is her resistance to other people estranging her. Everybody has taken her for granted. Everybody thinks that she is a wife and she must do this duty. But she has her individuality and she asserts it by creating a counter argument, by creating a counter reality from her own imaginative capacity. Of love and other monsters, a 17 year old Arun emerges from a fire. He unveils his extraordinary capability to perceive and control the thoughts of those nearby. He dwells in a perilous realm beyond conventional limits. Male, female, intellect, physic, male, female, intellect, physic, into themes of love, longing, and the human condition as it relates to the unknown and otherworldly. What happens in this particular story is that the boy forgets everything after he emerges from the fire. But he emerges with a special ability, ability to read minds and to manipulate memories. Very dangerous. So what he does is, is go, he, after that, he goes and he lives with a particular person and starts uh, applying his newly found abilities to make differences in the surroundings um, of him. But what is the consequence of such a decision? That is what these stories are about. Now we will move on to the discussion of science fiction films in India. This is the most common media um, that people rely on 
while talking about science fiction. Shekhar Kapoor's Mr. India, it was one of the earliest science fiction movies which became very popular. Before that also there were science fiction movies made in Tamil, in Telugu, uh, in the Malayalam industry but none became as popular as uh, Shekhar Kapoor's Mr. India released in 1987. It had a watch that can make someone invisible, bringing science fiction to common people. It also has an item song which was very popular but forget about it, let us come back to that watch. After you wear the watch, the person becomes invisible and you have one of the most iconic character, villain characters that was ever uh, seen in Indian cinema that is Mugambo. If you remember or if you don't, if you just go and watch the movie. So there you have the concept of a device that can um, allow light to rays to pass through you. You can only be seen by using a red uh, filter. If there is a red filter, then you will be visible. If there is no filter, once you press this button, everything, you are invisible. 2003 Koi Mil Gaya, directed by Rakesh Roshan. This film follows the story of a mentally disabled young man who befriends an extraterrestrial being with special powers. This autistic boy, mentally disabled, the disease is called autism. So this autistic boy is helped by this alien from space. Now, where have I heard that uh, kind of story before? Yes, Bonku Babu's friend, a person who is troubled, he is helped from an, by an alien from space, right? Then we have Robot, released in 2010, also known as Enthiran. This Tamil film directed by S. Shankar features Rajnikanth as a scientist who creates a humanoid robot with artificial intelligence. So, in this particular story, there is a reference to artificial intelligence and its superhuman capabilities if the time comes uh, that we develop, uh, that the robot itself develops a conscience or a feeling of self, sense of self rather, right. Ravan 2011, directed by Anubhav Sinha. This film revolves around a video game designer who becomes a superhero to protect his son from a villainous character he created. So this video game designer actually dies in the movie. The character of superhero which is based on the character of the video game designer, that character comes into life and saves the family from the villain character in the same video game. Then we have a very popular release by Amir Khan PK in 2014, directed by Rajkumar Hirani. This satirical film follows an alien played by Amir Khan who lands on earth and questions human beliefs and practices. It is more of a social satire, it is more of a philosophical uh, blend of uh, mystery and uh, humor and um, uh, social commentaries. Science fiction part is that it has the creature has come from a separate planet and it is uh, viewing the practices, the culture on this planet from a third person perspective. Maki 2012, also known as Iga. This Telugu fantasy film directed by SS Raja Molly tells the story of a man reincarnated as a housefly seeking revenge against his murder. It is not directly a science fiction, but yet it uses lots and lots of science in fiction. The Makhi, that is the housefly, goes and takes revenge uh, because he, he, the other in the previous birth, he was murdered by a particular person. Tick, 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 2018, this Tamil space thriller directed by Shakti Saundra Rajan follows an escape mission to prevent an asteroid from colliding with Earth. So it is this trope of asteroid colliding on Earth is also found in this movie Armageddon which was released perhaps in 1990s in somewhere 1997 or 1998 you cannot recall exactly. So that idea of an asteroid crashing on Earth and people coming from the Earth to the asteroid and blasting it off in midair it had a lot of ideas which are very foolproof and uh, soundproof uh, when it comes to science fiction movies. Then we have 24 which is released in 2016 directed by Vikram K. Kumar. This Tamil language film revolves around time travel and the conflicts arising from manipulating the past. This is again a series which started with the release of the movie Koi Mil Gaya. 
This series started uh, directed by Rakesh Roshan. The series follows the superhero adventures of Krish, played by Rithik Roshan, who possesses superhuman abilities. So Krish is the son of the previous autistic boy that we were um, talking about in Koi Milgya, Rahul. Right, Rahul becomes better. He becomes a scientist. He goes to the U.S. and in U.S., uh, people are exploiting his abnormally sound, brilliant scientific skills to build a computer which can predict the future. So that person leaves behind his son. His son grows up and finds out about the entire plot. It's a wonderful story, very entertaining. You can watch. Bhavesh Joshi Superhero, which is released in 2018, directed by Vikramaditya Motwani. This film tells the story of a young man who becomes a vigilante superhero to fight against corruption. Now, it is the time for a quiz. After all this detailed discussion, let us at least have a reflection that what are the things that we understood or uh, gained from this particular lecture. What is the current state of science fiction literature in India and how has it evolved over the past decade? Now, in order to answer this question, you will have to first consider this in India because here you have two kinds, science fiction written in English and science fiction written in vernacular languages. These two things, you have to separate these two categories in order to understand the use of the language. Science fiction when used uh, or um, written in vernacular language reaches a much more bigger audience. However, science fiction which is written in English language reaches a, uh, you know, the world uh, limit kind of thing. But it will not be enhancing the readers or it will not be enriching the that language literature. Okay. So how has it evolved over the past decade? So in the beginning, which were the authors who were writing science fiction? What were the media? What was the language that they were using? Were English science fiction written uh, in the very first of history of science fiction in India? Or the writers were mostly writing in Bangla or Oriya or Marathi or Tamil, Telugu? That you will have to look into. How is science fiction perceived and received by readers and audiences in India? Talk around. Talk to people, talk to any other person who has not seen this course, who has not been a student of this course. Ask around, if have you seen a science fiction movie? Have you read a piece of science fiction literature? Do you know a science fiction author? If not, then tell them. And while you are doing that, you try to understand what is the current situation. We have discussed right from Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose, we have had a history of science fiction in India, but people are not aware of it. So it is our duty as teachers and learners of science fiction studies, we must spread the word, right? Are there any notable Indian science fiction authors who have gained recognition both nationally and internationally? And what are some of their prominent works? We discussed Narlikar, we discussed Vandana Singh, we discussed Satyajit Ray. These three authors, they have international recognition. Everybody who are uh, aware of the development of the field of science fiction studies, they know these three names. How has the advent of technology and the internet impacted the dis dissemination and consumption of science fiction in India? For this, we will have to consider all the media that we use in order to discuss or bring into discourse science fiction. First of all, social media we have. Then we have the online conferences, seminars that are happening worldwide. Then we have publication houses. We have journals which are directed towards this particular domain of science fiction. So everywhere, all these things are on the internet also. So the internet has become a major source because also we have virtual reality which is actually a part of the cyberpunk culture. We have been discussing all of these things. So if you want to discuss cyberpunk, you cannot do without discussing internet. 
cyberpunk is that area cyberspace is that area that you will have to discuss internet its impact on science fiction science fiction's impact on the internet it goes both ways then we have how does indian science fiction compare to the global science fiction landscapes in terms of themes representation and cultural influences just go and uh, talk about let's say bonku babu's bandhu bonku babu's friend you talk about um, the works by uh, jayant narlikar then vandana singh everywhere you will find the blend of indian ethos patriarchy mysticism mysticism how does these uh, two this is a you know si sideline kind of thing it only takes place in um, vandana singh's uh, novel these two things are in three of the things because when we are discussing about let's say alien from outer space we see that they are benevolent they are good they are actually helping us we are expecting that they will be cooperative this is how indian um, psychology is uh, prepared right from the childhood it is how we are uh, groomed right from the childhood that we cannot outright go and doubt somebody who is from a different culture our culture is of inclusivity right how are indian filmmakers incorporating science fiction elements in their movies how is the genre received by indian cinema goers we discussed robot we have movies like koi mil gaya we have movies like pk and we know that they are blockbusters they have actually um, done a very good business all the movie goers all the movie buffs they have given very good reviews of these movies although some of them really question the science fiction element in these movies however as social commentaries as cultural studies from the point of view of uh, film studies they are exceptional they are um, standard setting in their own this is a list of references you will find i will draw your attention to uh, two of the most important references i have included one is this one this particular reference it talks about how uh, satyajit ray was in touch with stanley kubrick was in touch with arthur c clark they were actually planning to direct a movie together to produce a movie together called uh, based on the story of bonku babu's friend bonku babu's friend but they did not like the title so they changed it to the alien but later on something happened some other thing happened so satyajit ray had to give up uh, the movie plan was cancelled later only one year later steven spielberg released the movie the extraterrestrial or et which had similar plot lines like that of satyajit ray satyajit ray wanted to go and file a lawsuit but arthur c clark he said that don't do such things because your life will be over coming to usa and fight uh, the lawsuits in this usa courts better you go away you uh, don't um, in, in interfere in these people's affairs you make your own movie so actually the idea of uh, the et it was conceived and was implemented and in a movie script before the et was released by steven spielberg satyajit ray's son sandeep ray still claims that uh, he has letters to prove actually that this movie was planned way be before the extraterrestrial was released there is another article which i would like you to have a look at that is live mint this is about jayant v narlikar and uh, his uh, disbelief uh, or his lack of faith in the big bang theory then we have another article called the future of science fiction in india also science fiction in india a very uh, well known book published by bloomsbury we also have two books by two uh, indian authors which are critical works on science fiction one is by 
Shuparno Banerjee and another is by Atanu Bhattacharya. These all are references to the field of science fiction studies in India. Once you keep on studying, you can have references from there and go to a different subject. From there, you can go to a different subject. If you just look at all these references, you will have a very good idea of how the science fiction emerged as a genre in our country and what is the scenario of science fiction in India today. Thank you very much for being a part of this lecture. I hope as Indians you are you must be feeling very proud of yourself right now. Uh, please carry on this scientific attitude, the spirit that these Indian science fiction authors are trying to cultivate amongst us. See you in the next lecture. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone white and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening, I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.